Well, hello, you guys. Welcome. It is Brie Callis, and I am back. I am back to share with you guys some information, some steps to get you prepared for next week when we kick off Mind Your Money. If you joined us live on the video last night or you had an opportunity to um, check out what's new and what's happening and what's getting ready to happen here in our community, we mentioned um, getting your finances organized especially if you are considering um, starting a business, if you already have a business, or if you're considering scaling upwards. There's some things that you need to get in place now. Um, some of us have additional time because of what think, what is going on around us economically, whether you're part of the downturn or you just find that you have some free time at home and you want to begin to position yourself for that. So we're here for the work before the work. We'll be kicking off Mind Your Money on Monday. So you'll find me here roughly about 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, if I get, um, if I don't show up exactly at 8, I'll be in a few minutes after. So 8, 8 p.m. works for me um, here in the community. And I know some of you guys have that free time later in the evening as you get the children um, off to bed, things are a little bit more settled in. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, some steps that you can do beforehand to prepare you for the series that we're going to be um, kicking off on Monday. Mind your money. There's three things um, that's going to be important during this process and that you're going to find yourself doing with the tips um, that we're going to be going over. The three areas that we're going to focus on is elimination, categorizing, as well as organizing. Elimination is going to be uh, mostly that creative space. Uh, hey, Joanna, thanks for joining, love. Um, it's mostly, and actually, elimination is the creative space. It's going to be the one that you find um, most appealing, but it's also going to be uh, one of the most challenging because it's going to cause you to let go of some things during that elimination. Um, one reason why it's considered the creative step in um, getting your finances together and organizing is because you get to give some things away, number one. Number two, you also have the opportunity to return things to a store or if it's something that you purchase, on, purchase online and you realize you really don't need it. And the third opportunity is you get to return it to the rightful place in your home. So you'll find where some of these same things apply to money actually applies to your physical things and your physical surroundings. So you'll find that uh, in the elimination phase. Now, the second phase is going to be categorizing. The beauty of the categorizing is that it works alongside the elimination phase. So we may be going over something or an activity or I give you something to prepare for next week's um, step that's going to lead up to the other one. You'll find that in the categorizing. What's the, what the beauty of the categorizing phase it's going to allow you to get things in order. So if you got a lot of your insurance documents, if you got life insurance documents, all your financial documents will begin to categorize in that phase period. And sometimes it'll blend in during the elimination phase. Now, the third and final phase is organizing. The best part of organizing is when the time comes and you begin to want to seek out funding or you need to just know where a document is because we took care of elimination, we took care of categorizing like documents together, you'll know easily where to go find those things, whether you need to turn that into a mortgage broker, if your loan officer at the bank is asking for those things, if your accountant or tax preparer, you'll now be able to get that without saying, you know what, give me a week to gather these documents um, in order to get them together. So elimination, categorizing, and organizing are going to be the three major things that you guys are going to notice that we do alongside this particular series. Also during this series, we're going to begin to create some habits. What I find um, with organizing, why people fail and go back, they have not created a new habit alongside that new activity. 
So you find things starting to pile up again, or you find that you got a pile here, you got a pile in that room, you got a pile in your car, and you really don't know which way to go. So we'll be creating some habits along the way. What I will encourage you in order to prepare for Mind Your Money is to get you a new journal. Um, there'll be some thought provoking questions that I'll be asking you all to think about. You don't have to share it, but if you feel open um, and you want to share it because it might free somebody else up, it might give someone else another perspective, you can drop that in. So I encourage you to get a new journal or a new notebook. I would not um, say to get anything that's going to tear out the sheets. You need those sheets to be bounded um, so you'll be able to go back to that information and review it at a later date. Um, with those creating habits, we have to begin. Sometimes we're surrounded with so much negativity that we've lost track with the things that just create joy in our space. Money is a huge issue for so many individuals. Um, but sometimes the things that's going on in your personal space, um, is decreasing your energy levels, is causing you to be distracted, is causing you to have um, lack of focus and clarity. So I want to give you guys five things to begin to do. If you already do it, great. If you don't, as we go along, I want you to begin. These are just some beginning habits. There'll be more to come during the series, but there's five of them that I want to um, I want you guys to begin to do. And number one, I want you to begin to make your bed every morning. Yes. Make your bed every morning. I read um, about that tip. I can't remember uh, which one of the books I was reading, but it was from an author. And one of the things that um, the questions he was being interviewed and they asked, what would you say is one of the key things to the wealth, accumulating the wealth that you have. And the thing he said, number one, was building the habit of making my bed every day. It puts the mind in a space that, you know what, it's time to get moving. It's time for me to get things done. And then when you return back to that space, you know and you feel a little bit more accomplished that things are done. Now I can actually lay back peacefully. I don't have to bring my work to that workspace any longer because I've already set my day to move forward. So that first habit that I want you to create is making your bed every day. I promise you it's going to help change your energy levels. I love it. Every time I walk into my room, if my dresser might be a little scattered, if my nightstand might have something on it, but the biggest and the main focal point of the room is my bed, I, easy, I automatically feel at ease. I automatically feel a little more rested. So that's the first habit. Remember, we're going to be creating some habits that's going to go alongside your money journal. Uh, I mean, your money journey, but it's also going to help you personally. The second, um, the second habit I want you guys to work in, on is never leaving dirty dishes in the sink. If you still have children at home, there shouldn't be any dirty dishes in the sink. My children know automatically that's part of their chores. That's part of them um, being able to still remain underneath our roof. You're going to have to wash dishes. So I don't have to get up in the morning and wake up to a sink full of dishes. But even if you are single or if it's just you and your spouse there, begin to create the um the habit of not leaving dirty dishes in the sink. It also, almost in the same vein of having that bed made, when you walk into your kitchen, it makes getting coffee, fixing a cup of tea, fixing breakfast a little bit more enjoyable because you don't have to start the morning with a chore of doing something. So begin to create that habit of at least going to bed with um, dirty dishes removed from the sink. If you have a dishwasher, use it, pile it, turn it on. So when you wake up in the morning, those dishes are clean and can be put away. The third habit I want you guys to start thinking about doing along this money journey, you guys, is don't allow those same clean dishes to linger. 
Don't leave them on the counter in the dish rack. Don't leave them in your dishwasher. You want to be able to have those things set away in the cabinet where they belong on the shelf, wherever you keep those clean, uh, those clean dishes in a drawer, whatever it may be. Make it a habit to start to put those things away. I understand we went over three new things that you may not be doing. If you're doing any of them, put your hand up in there. Put me or something in the comments so I know if you're doing any of those things or if it's something that you're going to plan to work on during this Mind Your Money journey, you guys. Here's the fourth thing. This used to be a, a big stickler for me and it used to start my morning in a panic when I didn't do it. And the fourth habit that you can begin to do is put your keys in the same place in your home. So you're not digging through your purse. You're not tearing up the house. You're not screaming at kids in the morning about where's my keys. It's time to go. We're running them late. If they got to go to school, whatever it is, if they got to get to the, you know, to an activity after school, we don't have to hunt for these keys. They have a designated place for you to go ahead and grab those keys, you guys. Okay. So make sure you do that. Let me know if you guys do that now. Um, if you leave those keys in your purse, do you, or do you leave them in a designated place in your home? I want to know how you do with those keys. Or you're the, the individual that's running around and causing extreme havoc about keys um, when it comes to going somewhere or being ready. And here's the fifth and final, you guys. I want you um, to place items. I'm not at this stage where I need reading glasses. But it is such a pet peeve with my husband. Uh, because we do online training, he's one of our instructors. He's always going and trying to find out where's my glasses? Where's my reading glasses? Where's my reading glasses? So if it's something of use on every day, I'm pretty sure you're going to need to use it while you're journaling during this process. Or if you need to read something that you might be researching on one of the tips or whatever it may be, have a designated place for that must use item. Remember, we're going to be going over three things during this journey, eliminating, categorizing, and organizing. But most of all, we're going to create some habits through this process. Sometimes keys are in different places and it causes an issue. I know I was there. I was that one causing extreme havoc in the home. And I just began to do things differently um, to have it. One thing now, because my car... I need the key to push start this car. I actually have a, a a back pocket of my purse that I keep those keys always. So I don't have to worry about locking the keys in the vehicle or doing the, the hunt anymore for those keys. So you guys, I look forward to Monday kicking off Mind Your Money Mondays here at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time here in the Pearls and Purpose uh, Facebook community. If you know someone that's going to be able to benefit from this information, feel free to go ahead and invite them to join our community. I'm looking forward to it. You guys let me know if you're looking forward to it. Put a comment on this. Even if you're catching it on a replay, let me know. I'm ready to mind my money. Got it? You got mind my money. Yes, Joanna, mind our money. This is about to be big and it's about to be great. And I look forward to helping you guys during this process. Enjoy your evening, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye now.